afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Chai Time with yours truly, Marwan Arati. Welcome to a beautiful cup of chai. Um, let's see who this is. This cup has been bought to you courtesy of our good friend Raina Scott. Posies for Lulu. Love you, Raina. Thanks for the cup. Hi, Raina. Mm, fantastic. All right. Now, some of you eagle-eyed observers may have noticed that Chai Pani Dad is rocking a new apron. Ooh. And yes, this is Spicewell's this. new color. Um, we ordered this for Father's Day. So all of you daughters and sons and moms out there, if you're trying to figure out what dad should get for Father's Day, trust me, get him a Spicewell apron. Can't go wrong. And you probably also noticed that I'm rocking a new pair of Chai Pani Dad shoes. <laughs> Those are total dad shoes. Dad shoes. Um, yeah, so the apron was brought to us by the good folks at Keldo, and the embroidery is done by Asheville T-shirt company. So if you get one of our aprons, you get to support two local businesses for the price of one. Now, how can that go wrong? All right, enough pitching my own products here. Let's get into talking about the food. Today, I'm doing a Parsi red curry with chicken, but the, you can pretty much put anything in it. You can put shrimp, you can put seafood, but traditionally, I make this dish with chicken. And I've been doing a lot of curry dishes recently, and here's why. A, they're easy. Um, you can make a lot of it. It stores well, saves well. It's versatile. You can put anything in a curry, whether you want, um, you know, chicken or meat or fish or seafood or whatever have you. And more importantly, to show everybody that a curry isn't just one thing. That there are a huge variety of curries, and they all are sort of subgenres of this one genre, basically, that includes sauces, gravies, um, curries, and they're universal. Um, they're really familiar, and they're very familiar in Asian cuisine, and in Indian cuisine, there's just as many curries as one can imagine. So I think this is our fourth curry that we've shown you, and I like this one a lot because it looks like a lot of ingredients, but it's actually, you know, really, really simple to make. Okay, so what are the ingredients? Well, um, I went ahead and measured everything out because this would take a while to uh, put it all out on the plate, but let's go with the spices first. You've got one stick of cinnamon, you know, any size, don't worry too much about how big or small it is. You've got about three or four pods of cardamom, three or four cloves, about a half a tablespoon of cumin seeds. And how many teaspoons in a cumin seed, Chai Pani Ma? How many <laughs> teaspoons in a tablespoon? <laughs> three teaspoons in one tablespoon, so this is roughly one and a half teaspoons, in case you're wondering what a half a tablespoon is. And that's a full tablespoon of coriander seeds, and look at the beautiful color on those. And I think this is the first time we've cooked um, uh, at, chai at chai time with whole coriander seeds. So this is gonna be exciting. It's gonna add a whole different flavor mm. profile to the dish. Sesame seeds, white sesame seeds, uh, black peppercorn, and that's about a tablespoon's worth of black peppercorn. By the way, the sesame seed is a teaspoon and a half. Um, and uh, that's it. And there's also Kashmir chili powder. Uh, I could have put whole Kashmir chilies here, but I figured it's hard for folks to get that, so we'll go with the Kashmir chili powder because, of course, Spice Wallace sells it, as it does all of these beautiful spices here. <laughs> um, but uh, if you don't have Kashmir chili powder, regular chili powder is fine. You just won't get that beautiful bright red color, but you'll still get all that flavor, okay? And then we also have about a five, six cloves of garlic and about an equivalent amount of peeled chopped ginger. Let's call it a loosely packed quarter cup of each, give or take. I mean, I, I, you know, less rather than more. And about a cup of white onion. And you're probably wondering to yourself, hmm, these onions, that's an unusual size of dice. This is where the secret, this is where the magic's gonna be of how this, how simple, how easy this dish is. You're gonna wanna race off and go and make this dish as soon as I'm done with you. Okay, hot pan going. And from those of you that remember the last time I seared my hand grabbing the handle, I got myself <laughs> a little handle on it. And why hot pan? We're gonna, we're gonna toast our spices. Why white onions and not red? Um, Hi, Vargis. You can do red onions too. I just happen to have white onions, so I'm using white onions. Um, this dish tends to be a little bit on the sweet and aromatic side. And you know, an onion's an onion at the end of the day, but I find red onions to be a little bit um, zingier and white onions to be a little bit sweeter. So if you have both and you had to pick for this dish, go white onions. If you don't have both, don't worry about it. Onions and onion. Heck, you could put shallots in there like Gordon Ramsay likes to call them. <laughs> Talk, right. to, talk for a minute about the difference between the chili powder. Somebody was talking about how they have South Indian chili powder. What makes Kashmiri chili powder special? Most chili powders do one thing, add heat. And usually have, they have flavor, 
Almost every chili pepper has a slightly different, dis different and distinct flavor, but depending on how hot it is, depending on the scoville units, you're not going to taste much of the flavor and all you're really getting is heat. And you get a little bit of red color, but not like this rich, gorgeous redness that you see sometimes in a red curry. So Kashmiri chili powder uh, is actually, the scoville units are lower, it's not as hot as regular, I mean it's still spicy, don't get me wrong, but not searingly spicy as some of these South Indian chili peppers. Um, even though it says Kashmiri, it's grown primarily in the south of India and used in the south of India in south, southern Indian cuisine, but the North Indians love it and they use it a lot in North Indian cuisine and maybe that's how the name came together and it's flavorful. It's got almost a fruitiness to it. Mm -hmm. I, I taste it raw and I'll get the heat right off the bat, but I'll get a little bit of the fruity notes and last, the color. So that's why I like Kashmiri Kashmir. It really is the Cadillac, <laughs> the Rolex, the Rolls Royce, the Maruti, the ambassador of, of ah, spices. Okay. Wait, question about the spices. Yes. This was a dry pan, right? This was a completely dry pan. I like using a heavy bottom pan. I've had this large cast iron pan for 20 years and it served me well and it's perfect for toasting spices in it because it retains the heat well. All right, so while this is happening, I'm gonna turn this over for a second. Um, let's talk the chicken part of this. I have for you a viewing pleasure. I've already done the chicken. So, what do I have here? I actually have boneless, skinless chicken breast. Why boneless, skinless chicken breast? Well, when I went to the grocery store today, that's what they had. For this dish, I actually prefer uh, bone-in, skin-on, like pies would be perfect, but don't worry about it. If all you have is chicken breast, use chicken breast. If you got chicken wings, use wings. If you got legs and thighs, use thighs, use legs. Don't worry. So because this is uh, boneless, skinless, I hit it with a little bit of Kashmiri chili powder, a little bit of turmeric, and a little bit of salt. For those of you that have watched previous videos, you know I like to do my little trifecta of spices on any meat, even if I'm adding it directly to the dish. And I put a little bit of oil on it, and I'm gonna throw it in the oven. Because I think this dish is gonna work better if I cook this chicken off first. But if I was working with boneless, skinless chicken, I might have, I mean not boneless, bone-in, skin-on chicken, I might have thrown it directly into the pot. But I recommend doing it this way, and here's why. Versatility, you don't, have to use all the curry with the chicken. If the chicken's already in it, then you've got chicken curry whether you like it or not. Here you can make the curry, cook the chicken separately, and use as much of the curry as you want with the chicken, and then save the rest, if you follow what I mean. Um, if you don't want chicken, then you know, you're know you gonna be putting fish in, or shrimp, or tofu, or tempeh, or potatoes, or whatever the heck else you wanna put in there, or vegetables in there. So I like this technique. All right, enough talking. Let me throw this into the oven. And that's, I put it in full blast, that thing goes up to 500. Uh, by the time our curry's done, that'll be done cooking. Okay. And then we're gonna put it, of course, into the cook. All right, guys, and this is the just dirt simple way to make this curry. This, I promise you, this won't smell like turmeric or taste like turmeric. I will wash this really, really well. I promise you, buddy, yes. don't get mad at me, okay? But I needed a slightly larger one. The and saga of the stolen smoothie maker. Oh, it's fine. I, I love the smoothie maker because it's like perfectly sized for me to do these little masalas without me having to deal with the whole blender every time. So, onions go in there, and that's why I just roughly chopped them because as you can guess, they're about to be pureed. The ginger and the garlic, that's why also it's roughly chopped, because as you're gonna guess, we're going to puree the living daylights out of that too. The masalas, the spices, let's put that in there too. Yeah, right, it's not gonna smell, oh my goodness. Let me get a, <laughs> oh no, no, a good dishwasher will get that out, that smell out for you. Let me put the stick aside for a second. Scrape all the same here. You can, I mean, I wish you guys had smell of vision at home. Yeah, it's amazing. Because this particular, so aromatic. It's just so aromatic. Ah, nobody's asked me about sesame seeds yet, because given that it's the first time I've used sesame seeds. Um, in particular styles of Indian cuisine, we like using poppy seeds, sesame seeds, melon seeds, and what they do is they add creaminess and body and uh, to a dish. So if you want a curry to be a little bit thicker, adding some poppy seeds and ground up into a paste. Sometimes we even use cashew nuts. Here, sesame seeds, because I didn't want it was as creamy as, let's say, using poppy seeds or cashew paste, but I still want a little bit of that nuttiness in this dish, and, and it works beautifully. It's just a little, if Wish is over here, Wish would be having a drink right now. It's a little uh, hack 
that helps this <laughs> dish come together. I don't know where the heck sesame seed came from in this particular dish. I tried remembering how I even came up with this dish in the Chaipani repertoire, and, and the memory's escaping me. I don't remember where I saw it or how, what the inspiration for this was, but it's one of our favorites. Okay, I'm breaking up the cinnamon stick, and now that it's toasted, it's quite easy to break up, uh, just so that we, you know, it makes it easier to blend. Alrighty, we're gonna period the living daylights out of this. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, because it's not gonna blend perfectly without water. Someone's asking if you could use tahini instead of sesame seeds. I wouldn't use tahini instead of sesame seeds, because, um, you just want the seed part, not the oil part in there and the lemon juice and, and the salt and all that. If you don't have sesame seeds and you have tahini, I guess it'd be okay. Um, it would just be pretty flavor. hard to puree it in here. It'll add a little bit different flavor, but it's a curry, for God's sakes. It's meant to have whatever flavor it turns you on. So I, I, I don't <laughs> think it's a bad idea. Um, but if you have sesame seed, definitely use that instead. Okay, and then we gotta add a Kashmir chili powder to this. Um, we're going to add a heaping tablespoon because that's going to add... Heaping tablespoon? I'm making a lot of this, honey. And there's really no chilies <laughs> in anything else. I promise you're going to be just fine. Um, actually, let's just make it three teaspoons, which is the same as a tablespoon. One. All right, how about I just go two? Thank you. You're welcome. If you like it hotter, you want it redder, go three teaspoons, i.e. one tablespoon. If not, eh, don't worry about it. Okay. Let's buzz this sucker. I don't want this thing exploding on you, so make sure it's on tight. Blend away. Well, the morning is July, like a big pizza pie. It's the morning. charging you for the show because you just paid me to watch <laughs> <laughs> you just paid me to, <laughs> to watch, watch me a blender blend, watch a blender go off and make a racket all right we're pretty smooth the smoother you can get this paste the smoother this curry will be so it's worth putting a little extra blend into it just do it in fact we're gonna do it one here more here we go again <laughs> feel pretty good about that. Voila! Curry is almost done. Uh, I love this technique. We puree onions quite often in uh, making certain types of curries. I think you saw me puree and make a masala when I did bindalu. I think you saw me puree and make a masala when I did, um, what was it? Oh, the shrimp mm. Uh But this is the first time you've seen me puree the onions in it too, and it just makes life easier. Okay, where is this going? It's going to go to pot. This is going to splatter like holy hell. So just, you know, I'll do the cleanup, but just know that at home. Uh, what I like to do is get the oil hot and uh, get the oil <laughs> hot if I can stop talking ahead of myself because the amount of chai I've had already. Yeah, he's <laughs> wired. I'm wired for sound. I'm so excited. And then turn the oil down to medium so that when you put this in, you don't have a splattering all over the place, but get used to a little splatter. I'm um, standing back I'm now. Standing he's warned me. Right, Fair I'm warning. Put this in. And for the oil, I have about a quarter cup of oil in here. And I know it looks like it's pretty oily, but that's because right now we're just frying this masala. We really want it to fry. We want it to be slightly suspended in the oil as it fries. And then once we add our tomatoes and uh, coconut milk and water, uh, the ratio of the oil will suddenly make complete sense because we'll end up with, give or take, about a gallon to a gallon and a half of this curry. And you can tell I'm making sure I don't use any of this flavor. Scrape it out well. It drives me crazy when I see people like not scrape the last, last little itty bitty bits out. In fact, so crazy. Oh my God, just smell that honey. Yum, wow. You can see it's the, the toasted the spices. The cinnamon, the toasted yeah. spices, there's cardamom in it. I mean, it, there's almost like a little garam masala going on here. And, uh, mm -hmm. and um, along with the onions and the ginger and the cloves. What's happening so, here? I'm just rinsing this whole thing out. Um, so I can get 99.9% .9 of the flavor. Add just a little can bit of water. Can you tell he's spice obsessed? Well, it's good spices. There we go. All right, that's in there. Um, you know what's cool about this apron, honey? I can keep my cell phone up here. 
I can stick my pen in here. Very well designed. And my uh, uh, rag right down over here. And uh, this is for, you know, snacks. Ah. Ham, especially <laughs> ham. ham snacks. Uh, Vish, you missed Marwan singing opera while he was blending his spices. So your loss. <laughs> Fish well, just... he probably is looking at like, oh my god, thank <laughs> god. Thank god. Like, I would have needed another I drink. A near miss. <laughs> okay, so our masala is now sizzling in oil, and this thing can bubble and pop up like molten lava, you know, like little bloop, bloops. Ooh. So just, yeah, be careful, monitor the heat, and, um, you know, a little splatter in the kitchen is worth. What worth. happened here? Whoops, I turned the thing around. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Um, a little splatter is worth it uh, to clean up because this curry is going to be delicious. Mm. All right, guys. Well, we're frying spices. Um, our chicken is... Oh, I white. see what you mean about this molten lava. Oh, yeah, that is serious yeah, splatter. Serious okay, I'm splatter. standing back. Yeah. Now, be right back. Where are you going? Be right back. He's leaving us alone okay. with the molten lava situation. All right. We're making I don't know what they Parsi. Call wait, hold on. Somebody's asking. We're making Parsi chicken curry. curry. Maybe I lost the tag that I put on it. Um, I don't know what they call this thing, but if you can pick up one of these little screens, it will really make your life easier when it comes to clean up when you're frying and stuff is popping up in the air. Um, all right. So this particular curry is going to be really aromatic, as you can tell, because we essentially put so much garam masala style spices in there. It's going to be a little bit spicy, but it's going to be smooth because we blended the living daylights. Uh, what are you standing back there because you're afraid of yes. the splatters? Because <laughs> we blended the living daylights out of, every, out of everything. So even the onions have been pureed, and it's just going to have this beautiful, smooth, almost silken texture. And we're going to finish it, obviously, with uh, tomatoes and coconut milk. I say obviously because, you know, what else would you finish a curry with except <laughs> tomatoes and coconut milk? Somebody's asking about a kori. Didn't you make a kori? Yes, on I one made of a these? Kori. Okay, so where can they find it? Spicewala um, Instagram channel or at Mirwan Rani or at Spicewala. Click on our um, video stories and uh, and uh, we will be there. I believe it's under a series called Chai Time. And a kori, not only is it a kori, are you kidding me? Not just any a kori. This was like probably the best goddamn a kori I've ever made in my life. <laughs> it took me 45 minutes to make this thing. Yeah, just kidding. Good. 20 minutes though. Put aside 20 minutes for a good a kori. And, and have all your prep ready, because you got to move fast once things start going. All right, we're just in the frying mode. And how do you know when it's fried? Well, it'll darken in color. When we first put it in, it was sort of a lightish brown, and now it's becoming a darker brown. And the oil, instead of floating on top, will be more integrated and starting to separate on the sides. All right, so, Japanese mom, all yes. the spices, all the masalas, the onions, what's missing so far at this stage, which I keep talking about doing this it. This stage? Right, I didn't know I was going to get quizzed. Ah. Ah, ah, salt. Salt. Salt as you go, right? Salt as you go. Now, if I was frying the onions, I'd have salted the onions as I was frying them, but right now the onions are pureed, so we're just going to add salt at this stage here. Remember, nothing else is salted so far except for the chicken. So depending on how well you salt the chicken, don't go crazy. But I'm going to taste this masala at some point before I put anything else into it to see this balance and definitely need that salt. For those of you that were tuned in last week, I think I went a little crazy talking about salt and the importance of salt. Okay. Vish loves the hair. Did you notice he got a trim? Thank you, Sarah Jane. Mm. Mm. Woo. A little bit of heat. Mm. Thank you, Sarah bit. Jane. Eclipse Salon. Remember how he toned down the heat for my benefit? Now he's yeah, saying there's already... Yeah, there's coconut milk and tomatoes mm -hmm. and... So what am I tasting for? I'm tasting for what's supposed to be in there. Is it too cardamomy? Is it too cinnamon -y? Is it too potpourri-ish? No, I can taste garam masala, but it's balanced. There's plenty of heat from the Kashmir chili powder. It's missing acid, for sure, but we know that's going to come from the tomatoes. But the salt that I put in there helped bring all these flavors to the forefront, as we talked about in last week's diatribe on salt. Okay, clean as you go. Put things away. And yes, to answer Vish's question, this is the trimmed version of Marwan's pandemic hair. I had to stage it down. I couldn't just go from like, you know, full Frodo, plucked chicken look. 
So, um, you know, I'm stage. I'm, 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 I'm sort he's of scaling. Down. I'm scaling. Like, yeah, he's scaling you. down. Vish, mm. I, if I could figure out how to be on camera with him, I would, but I'm not that technically advanced. All right, guys. This masala is fried. Um, how do I know it's fried? For me, experience, I'll try to put it in the recipe notes. The timing was, I'd say we went about five, six minutes of frying this masala. Um, and um, I can tell the color's changed. Um, the oil's fully integrated and I can taste it. And we're gonna keep cooking. Oh my God, even from just when I tasted last time, I can taste the onions are cooked more. This is really important, guys. You wanna make sure you fry this because from this point forward, we're putting in tomatoes and, and, um, and coconut milk and the frying action of the onions will more or less come to an end. And you, the last thing you want is to taste a lot of raw garlic, raw ginger, and raw onion in your curry. <coughs> so you want this part, don't rush this part. Get it done. If you're not sure, just go a few minutes longer. Uh, it's not gonna hurt it. Uh, it's not gonna burn. That's why we put so much oil in there. And this beautiful stop pot, as you can see, I mean, it's practically nonstick. So as I move the spices away, you can see the bottom of the pot. Um, scrape the sides. Just don't let any of the good stuff escape or burn or cake on. Uh, just stir it back in. And I would say at this point, I'm feeling very confident that if I put my tomatoes in, that we're gonna end up with deliciousness. Deliciousness. All right, how much tomatoes? So this is, ooh, wow, my wall volume. Um, it's by a weight. It's about a pound and change, almost three pounds of um, tomatoes. So it's about the size of two of the smaller cans. So it's about the equivalent of two of these small cans is basically what's in here. These are crushed tomatoes. Mm, and in we go with that. And you guys have heard me wax poetic about crushed tomatoes versus, in the can versus fresh tomatoes. This is a dish that 100% calls for uh, crushed, high quality tomatoes. Why crushed? 100%. 100%. Anything less than that and I don't know. Somebody gonna get hurt <laughs> real bad. All right, my God, look at this. This is, These are uh, San Marzano's. Uh, no, these are Pomodoro's, yeah. And uh, yeah, San Marzano style tomatoes, beautiful, pureed. Mmm, sweet, tangy, perfect. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this can, give it a rinse out, and get the rest of that tomato in there. Okay, at this point, you're safe from the molten lava masala. Okay. Because now you can come in closer, because the tomatoes are gonna obviously cut everything. It smells delicious. Yeah. And now we've got to basically make sure the tomatoes cook. Again, the same thing. From the, I'm, and I'm staging it. I didn't put the coconut milk and at the same time as the tomatoes because I want the tomatoes to fully cook first. And, um, um, and you'll know when it's fully cooked because it'll darken. It'll become much, much deeper red in color. And again, the oil will start to separate on the sides. I think you've talked about this before, but do a refresher quick thing about what's the rule of thumb of when to use canned tomatoes versus fresh tomatoes. Right. Um, the, there's no rule of thumb of, I mean, let me back up for a second. Most tomatoes in the grocery store, even though they look bright red, are not ripened. Um, they essentially were plucked off the vine um, green. They were gassed. And by, because they have to make the, the trip to the market, and the last thing you want is the tomatoes spoiling by the time to go to the grocery store. So in the grocery store, the gassing that's done to the tomatoes makes them look red, but they are still not fully ripe and juicy and, and um, with the sweetness and the acidity that you want from those tomatoes. So when you start cooking with those tomatoes, I mean, those tomatoes are fine for sandwiches, um, you know, for, um, for I, I'm trying to start to think of what else I do with it, not <laughs> juicy, other than sweet, a sandwich, like, other than in a sandwich or a salad or something like that, whatever it happened. <laughs> But just as the difference between a heirloom tomato at a farmer's market that was actually you know, ripened on the vine and it's just juicy and delicious and sweet and it tastes like a fruit, mm -hmm. right? Because that's at the end of the way tomatoes, that's what I'm looking for in cooking uh, over here. So obviously right now I can't get vine ripened tomatoes quite yet. Um, it's still early in the summer and uh, especially the local resto, I can't guarantee that they'll have those. So my backup, which in many instances I prefer, is canned tomatoes because canned tomatoes, the tomatoes are ripened on the vine and then crushed and pureed and, and put in the can. And then, the, and that way you're getting, you know, 
perfectly preserved summer tomatoes year-round. Uh, I love uh, pomodoros, I love um, you know San Marzano's, I love just anything from that region. Um, and But don't worry if you can't get those, just any decent high quality canned tomato, if you can get organic, would be great. Um, and also with Indian, you know, just in Indian cuisine in general, um, a lot of flavors coming from that tomato, so acidity and sweetness. So it's really important, because if you don't put really high quality tomatoes that are ripe, you're just gonna get a watery tasting dish. And when people wonder why doesn't their Indian food just not taste quite as vibrant and rich as, um, you know, if they've had it in a restaurant where they've done it right or done it well, it's probably gotta do with a number of things, but I would argue that tomatoes is a big part of it. Uh, does that answer the question? I answer the question. Somebody I was also asking if you can make this in advance and freeze it. Yes, yes. Does, yes, the, does the coconut exactly milk it. freeze well? Everything freezes well, um, you know. And, and of course you're gonna reheat it, and you can either microwave it or just you know put a block back in a pot and slowly bring it back up. And whatever you do, what you want to do is, I mean, I'd recommend reheating it back in a pot because you want to stir to reincorporate the fat from the coconut milk and the uh, acid mm -hmm. from the tomatoes. So, all right, you see how the color's already darkened? Yeah. And the whole thing's turned from brown to red, and that's why this is called Parsi Red, red. Chicken Curry. Not to confuse, the chicken's not red. <laughs> the curry's red, just in case there's any confusion out there. Chicken's normal chicken, just plain old chicken. What would you use instead of chicken to make this vegetarian? Uh, to make this vegetarian, I, I think any kind, you know, vegetables in here would go great, sort of uh, firm. Potatoes. Um, potatoes, yeah, but you know, you don't want to, uh, yeah, you, you, you don't want the dish too starchy. So I'd stay away from like sweet potatoes or squashes or something like that. But um, uh, like a winter squash or anything like that. But summer squash, zucchini, uh, okra, you could almost have a gumbo-ish thing going there. Uh, potatoes. Um, uh, oh, oh! I mean, if you wanted to make this sort of almost like a leafy green type of thing, I mean, you could probably cook off um, kale or chard or, well, it's not quite winter, but still. You could put something leafy, dark green in there and kind of have a uh, chickpeas. Would go phenomenal in here. Chickpeas. chickpeas. Yeah. And what's your opinion about tofu in this dish? Absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah, if your tofu is a great substitute, for some people, <laughs> for me, and if you got no choice, absolutely, why wouldn't it work? I mean, the reason I'm constructing this dish the way I do, and showing you guys how to do it this way, is so that the dish is not dependent on the protein. The dish is a delicious curry on its own, and I can add whatever you want to it. I know there's many, many dishes in India that is dependent on the proteins. For example, a vindavu. It would not be a vindavu without the pork. Uh, and I used lamb last time in there because that's such an integral part of the dish. But the last few curries I made, the going fish and this parsley red curry, you know, get your, get your, oh. Vish is asking about eggplant. <laughs> about egg, yes. See, this is why I have you around, Vish. This is why I have you around. <laughs> Vish has the best ideas. He's always got great ideas. Mm, mm. Okay, tomatoes are almost done. And how do I know they're almost done? The color's darkened. The molten lava thing's starting to happen a little bit, and there's oil around the edges. I don't know if you can see that, Chaipani Mom, without burning itself, but you can see the glistening of oil starting to pool around the edges, and that's how Mom said that you know that the, the tomatoes are cooked. Okay, guys. Next in, the coconut. What do I do with it? There it is. All right, stand back. Lauren's saying jackfruit. Jackfruit, yes. Jackfruit, wow. Jackfruit. Yes, 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 and you know, more and more stores are starting to carry jackfruit. Uh, just I was at Fresh Market today, and they have chunks of jackfruit uh, in one of those little vacuum seal pouches, you know, where you can pretty much put anything in there for 100 years, and it'll be fresh. And, and that's a great meat substitute, jackfruit. That's a phenomenal idea. Who is that, Lauren? Lauren. Lauren, thank you for the idea. Brilliant. We need to have more jackfruit in our lives, and I'm going to actually do a curry, a South Indian curry next time with jackfruit. Boom. Um, boom, indeed. Indeed the booms. Okay, all right, good people of the Instagrams. We are in the last phases of a beautiful, delicious, luscious, coconutty, cardamomy, clovey, coriandery, sesame, red chili e curry. I mean, look at that color, honey. It's already. I mean, just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This is. I mean, I feel like I'm making a curry cappuccino right now. It's gorgeous. Yeah, that's Maybe true. Maybe I can draw a heart in there. So this is an interesting question. Can you use non-dairy yogurt instead of coconut milk? It's um, a really different flavor. Yeah, it'd be a completely different flavor profile. So if somebody's allergic to coconut milk, um, okay, 
just this particular dish is dependent on the coconut milk in there to give it its basic. But not all curries have coconut milk. You can make a curry without coconut milk, and that's another misconception that oh, it's got to have coconut milk in order for it to be a curry. Quite often they do, and that's the version that became popularized all throughout Asia. So if you have a Thai curry, it's almost always made with coconut milk, you know. But next time I'll do a curry. Um, I don't know if I'll do one next week or switch up with something else. I will make a curry. And again, bear in mind the word curry is a catch-all intermingled phase for, phrase or word for sauce or gravy. Um, but I'll try to make a curry without any coconut milk just to show people that you can make it just with uh, water or tomatoes. Um, you can use stock if you wanted to in this. Uh, instead of the coconut milk, it would change the nature of the dish, but it would still be delicious, which is what we care about at the end of the day. Honey, look at that thing. So good. Look at that. I mean, look at the silkiness. Look at how beautifully smooth and silky it is. Um, and I'm going to taste some of this and check for salt and acidity. Oh, my God. Fish, are you talking mm. about okra fries? Mm. 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 A little bit salt. Can you tell he's excited about this mm. dish? And I would love a little bit more acidity in this. I really would. So to finish this off, I'm going to hit it with a little lime juice at the end. I did that with the uh, Go and Fish Curry the last time we did it, and I think this could benefit from it too. Um, it's kind of personal. I just like I like a little more acid in my food, um, but but you might taste this and, and decide it's delicious without the acidity, uh, without the extra acidity. So I already got plenty of acidity from this. Okay, coconut curry done. It's gonna. This is gonna thicken a little bit, and I'm preemptively I'm gonna put a little bit of extra water in there. Uh, what kind of water do I like to put in there, honey? Hot water. Hot water! Don't the shock of the curry! <laughs> Fish, you have to tell me which okra dish you're asking about. Okay, put about a half a cup of hot water in there, and just made it a little bit thinner. I'm so excited to have mm. this for dinner. Okay, chicken just went off. Our timing is perfect. <sighs> these and we're gonna just cut it up into pieces and put it in there um, let's see but um yum yum ba -da 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 -da. So remind us again, these were married, the chicken pieces were boneless, skinless. Boneless, skinless, because that's, that's what I ended up getting that's what from you found the, found during, the grocery store. The pandemic. Yeah, I would have loved to have gotten skin on, bone on thighs, because I think that all that bone and skin juiciness is perfect for this dish. But, you know, and we just cooked it at high, about 450, for about 30 minutes, for about as long as it took for this um, dish to be made. And depending on the size of the pieces, you can do, you know, you can cut them up if you want to, or you could, um, let me try this. Mm, mm, that's delicious. That little bit of turmeric, a little bit of chili powder, a little bit of salt, just makes, you know, the chicken a little bit more interesting than plain old baked breast of chicken. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but hey, I like that thing. What is it your people call it? Flavor. <laughs> My people, white people call it flavor. Um, Vish is putting in a formal request for the ochre dish that you made at one of your Brown in the South dinners. Ah, the one with the masala. It had caramelized onions. Yes, bindi you. masala. Oh. Okay, somebody put that in the back of their head. Okay. That is a great suggestion. Someone's also... Vish, I'm always glad you're on the show, but today, particularly glad you're on the show. But the minute he said okra, everybody chimed in about okra fries. Well, of course, Chai yeah. Pani's signature dish. They have a cult following. And that way, there's no way I'm ever showing you how we do that. <laughs> that thing's going to be patented. <laughs> And one day in the uh, Museum of Field. You have to come and visit. You have to come and visit that. One day in the Chai Pani Museum. I mean, ah, I just love spices so much. I'm just licking my fingers. Because even if I didn't have this curry and just had this chicken, the chicken's delicious. <laughs> oh, I know what I need a little extra. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. It was a personal hack. But in addition <laughs> to the chili powder, the turmeric, and the salt, I put a little teaspoon of ginger garlic paste in there. I had some leftover in the fridge from the last time we made ginger garlic paste, and I've explained this before, ginger garlic paste. Peeled ginger, peeled garlic, equal parts puree. And mm. a touch of water if, it need to, if you needed to puree well. Voila, ginger garlic paste, magic sauce. So put a little magic sauce in this, and 
now we're gonna put them sambar you've promised someone sambar i know i know i know so many recipes so little time. sambar and paneer are both I, coming up soon pandemic social justice there's a lot going on a lot in the going world. on in the world right now busy 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 making my contribution as much as i can in those areas of helping and trying to find the time to do this on top of that this part at least is comforting and brings pleasure all right chickens in there and let me put the last few pieces in hi jenny robo of chicken in and uh mm, god am i good look at that juicy perfectly done. <laughs> Mm. Mm. He's very excited about this We're dish. Very excited about this dish. We all need comfort in these times. Okay, so comfort guys, food is the name of the game. What I did was go ahead and put all the chicken in there, you know, because I'm going to eat this whole dish over the next couple of days. But as I mentioned before, if you want to reserve some of this curry, cool it and put it aside before you put your chicken or your fish or your whatever it is, tofu or whatever you want to put in there, I would recommend doing that. You don't want to freeze it with the protein or the vegetable already in there. You just want to save it almost like a curry stock, and then defrost some and, and you know get your get your curry on um so mm, 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 mm. what am i looking for honey i don't uh, know what are you on. looking for and waste not what not right now in this pan are lots of oh, delicious see, he, he literally doesn't waste a single thing not even a drip of anything not even a drip of anything let's get some of that oil in there because it's got chickeny flavor and it's not going to hurt the not gonna hurt the curry Call at me all. Jinga. What is Colmi Jinga? Somebody's asking, can they use Call the same Jinga. curry recipe for Colmi Absolutely. Jinga? Absolutely. Without the curry. But what do you mean? Wait, without? I don't understand the question. You mean maybe cook the Colmi this way? Colmi a prawn. Prawn, sure. ah, okay. Yeah. And you can add, oh, mm, you can absolutely make this curry and serve it with prawn. Okay. Absolutely, and then I wouldn't obviously cook the prawn off first. I would go ahead and just put the, uh, you know, a little bit of masala on the prawn, the Kashmir chili powder, the turmeric, the salt, maybe a little ginger. Meh, I wouldn't even put ginger garlic paste on the prawn because if you're just coating the prawn and then throwing it right in here, you don't want raw ginger garlic paste. I only put the raw ginger garlic paste on the chicken because I was cooking it. I, I, I don't want it going in the last The prawns sound delicious in this. Yeah. All right, guys. We are ready to rock and roll. Um, let me try it again and see if I still want that acid in there. Mm. <laughs> Happy dance. Happy dance. Marijuana's happy dance. Little lime juice. And you know, you can do this a la carte. I mean, a la minute. Means that as you serve the dish, put a little fresh lime on the table, put some fresh uh, Julian onions, a little bit of cilantro, tomatoes, make an Indian sort of kachumbur as the Parsis like to call it, and then white rice, basmati rice, and this will be beautiful. But I'll do it right now, because I'm gonna eat this curry soon. And just a little hit of some fresh lime juice. Clean as you go. Show it away. Speaking of waste not want not, let's get all this good stuff in there. Where's Rosie? Vish is asking about Rosie. Rosie, come here, girl. Rosie's going to make her cameo. Come on, come on, come in for let's your Let's find her. Where's she going? Have ah! A have a seat. Hi, everybody. Hello, my girl. Mwah. There she is. Miss Rosie. Hey, I was trying on. to flip the camera. There she goes. There Hi. She goes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, please try this one at home. You saw how easy it was. I mean, my God, it almost looks like a tomato soup, honey. You kind of want a grilled so cheese yummy. sandwich to go with that. And uh, let's do a little plate up. Little plate up. Who's nearby and wants to come by for some food? Oh my God! Yes, I got a gallon of the stuff. Seriously, look at how big this pot is. You can tell when I'm humming that I'm a happy boy. He's very excited about this I'm dish. Very and my favorite garnish is typically cilantro. So I'm going to hit this with a little cilantro. All right, guys, there you have it. Um, let me give it a little something, something. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what would be perfect on top of this? A little teaspoon of coconut cream. If you have a oh, high-quality coconut cream at home, just a little glob on the top to give it that little extra coconutty flavor. That would be delicious. Should we do that? Sure. Okay. Let's find coconut right. cream. Yeah, I think it's in the other one closer. This one here? Go down on the bottom uh, thing. Coconut cream. Organic coconut cream. Premium quality. Yes, Varghese, it's a date. 
rotis. Rotis. He's going to bring the rotis. Bring with the his rotis. amazing roti. What is it called? The roti matic that he has. <laughs> but amazing. It's like a computer that makes rotis for you. It's the coolest thing ever. Mm, look at this. What's going on here? This is just fresh coconut oh, cream. So yummy. Yeah. Wow, this is like indulgent. Now Rosie's chiming in. There we go, a little coconut cream on the top. And guess what, guys? I'm so excited because my cilantro experiment, where I tried getting some cilantro growing in the actual summer heat, is working. It's not the prettiest looking cilantro in the world. Uh, it got a little got a little sun yellowed before I cut it. There's a fresh batch coming up, but still, it is cilantro for my garden. Yay! And this smells just you like calypso cilantro. So we have a little bit of that on the top there. Calypso cilantro. Calypso cilantro, and a little bit of it over there. Oh my God, I'm so happy, so happy, so happy. All right, guys, please try this at home. Let me know what you think. If you like it, cilantro nest. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I plating up for eating this at home? But it's just so much fun. Um, so yummy. This is done. Okay, thanks for joining me. I hope I'm able to show you that a curry isn't just one thing. I think we've made four curries so far. We're gonna keep making curries because there's still a hundred more to go. I'll mix it up. Love the idea of the bindi masala. I want to do bangan bhartha for you, which is an eggplant bhartha, a smoked eggplant dish, almost like a eggplant, uh, you know, uh, ragu, if you will. And, uh, you know, try this dish. If you want to make it for dad and father's day, I'm sure he'd love it. If you want to get him the matching apron, <laughs> shameless plug, <laughs> I'm sure he'd that. love it too. Um, good to see you guys. Um, please cook the dish. Let me know what your recipes look like. Post your pictures. I'd love to see it. If you have questions, hit me up at Marwan Rani, or you can also hit up at Spicewala, and they will forward those questions to me. Thank you for joining me. Namaste, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.